All right, shoot. One last message out to your crews. Let them know we're getting rolling and we will kick it off. Um, welcome, welcome. My name is Nick Martinez. Really excited to be on here with you today. Uh, we're going to make this huddle call 30 minutes or less. And I wanted to take some time today and really chat through the Power 30 calls that you're going to be seeing the rest of the month. Uh, we did them at the end of November. Uh, drop a one in the chat if you participated in any of those drop a two if they're brand new to you and you didn't get to participate in anything okay good 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 a couple of you didn't participate but most of you did awesome um so for the rest of the month our focus community-wide is really going to be getting ketones into people's hands and utilizing those Power 30 calls to amp up your social media, to amp up our just attraction, our connection uh, on social media. So for the rest of the month uh, from this community wide, we're going to be doing our Monday huddle calls. And then we're going to be focusing on the Power 30. So we're not going to have the Wednesday huddle call. Uh, just th to have two calls back to back is a lot, obviously, just given the attendance on this one. Um, but what I wanted to take today to do is kind of go through and explain the different pieces of the Power 30 and kind of help you guys understand the why behind those activities. Because a lot of times if we just do the activities, it's one thing. But if you understand the reasoning, if you understand the purpose, if you understand uh, the like the whole process, because this is all choreographed for a very specific reason to hit different areas and to make sure that you're posting, you're growing, you're engaging, you're building the know, like, and trust factor over time, which leads to you uh, creating a community of people that know, like, and trust you that are excited about what you're doing. So in order to do that, I have a friend of mine on. She actually led. In fact, if you were on the Power 30 this morning, drop a one in the chat. Now, here's the beauty of it. If you can't watch it live, which I understand timing isn't always perfect for everyone. And in fact, I was tied up uh, at a class this morning at the time, so I missed it. But all of these are recorded and they're put into the Prove It Promoter Group. So there's no excuse for not taking action with it, right? All you gotta do is go to the Prove It Promoter Group, click play, watch it, take the action. And I'm telling you, it's like building the business with your friend or having somebody literally hold your hand the entire time you're building this business. So in order to kind of share with us a little more, I have Mandy on, Mandy, actually led the Power 30 this morning. Uh, Mandy, real quick, say hi, introduce yourself uh, for those that haven't met you yet. Hi, my name is Mandy Podlesny. I live in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I've been drinking and sharing ketones for seven years this month. And I'm excited to work and train with y'all today. <laughs> Hello. Awesome. Well, let's just start. Uh, in your mind, Mandy, what's the purpose? Like, why are we actually doing these? Why are we putting the amount of effort and energy into these on a daily basis? Um, we're really doing these to show you that it doesn't matter where you start. It really, like, these are the activities that I do every single day to get and explode my business for seven years. And this is just the, it, we overcomplicate so much our business. Um, and these are the basic, basic things to drive your business forward every day. And not only that, you can do them in 30 minutes, but if you want to grow and explode faster, you can do them for longer. So if you're just starting out and you're confused, do the power hour or power thirties and do these activities, get into the practice of, and then the more and more that you're practicing, the easier and easier it gets and the easier and easier you're able to like expand on the time. If that makes sense. Absolutely. I love it. Um, as far as replication in somebody's business, like if you're on the Zoom right now and you have a promoter that you're working with, the simplest way to make sure that your promoter knows what they're doing and support them is to what? Invite them to the Power 30, is to message them before it. And one of the things that, that you're going to find as you start leading, as you start having a, a crew that you are leading, uh, it always starts with yourself. When we do LCD, we talk about leadership. And the first step in leadership is just leading yourself, right? And how, how do you do that? You lead yourself to the Zoom. You get on the Zoom. You're responsible for taking the time to be there and doing the activities. And then as a leader, we promote the things that we're doing ourselves, 
So it makes it really easy if you're on to say to your other promoters, hey, here's the details. Are you on? Are you there? And next thing you know, you have Mandy supporting your team. You have whoever, Mel Humphrey, you have Sarah Ramos, you have Amber Horn leading and training your people. It's called leverage. It's amazing. And in a community like this, we get to leverage in a very positive way other people's strengths. So uh, Mandy, talk through just the some of the framework and the process and maybe tell us a little bit about the different steps inside of power 30 and the why behind them cool yeah so i have if you guys didn't get it already um one we have a pre-recorded one too but i like to do the lives so if you're ever just like oh i just want to knock it out really fast and do a 12 minute we have that so ask nick or get whoever you're working with to do that and then in addition we have slides that show all of the things I'm going to go over. So you don't have to ferociously take notes. Um, but the first, like these are literally the exact steps. So the first one that we do is warming up our feed. And what I mean by that is commenting and engaging on posts. And wherever your guys' zone of genius, like for me, I am not an Instagram person. I have no idea what I'm doing on there. I am a Facebook ninja. So on Facebook, for me, it would be warming up my feed um, and going on the news feed and commenting back to everybody that you're friends with. Um you can, you know, if somebody posts a picture of their dog, just write cute dog or, you know, and then just be heartfelt and true to whatever it is. You're not going to go spam them, but you're going to like say hi. And the reason why we do that warm up the feed is before you post, um, you're going to basically tell the platform, Hey, this person that she engaged with is important to show those posts. And then somebody might see your dog post, but then scroll down two posts before and see a freebie yeah. Friday or see something like that. And they're going to maybe inquire about ketone. So it's not always just about posting or Facebook. It's always or posting or ketones. It's more about, um, sorry, my dogs are barking and giving me brain buffer. Um, it's, it's like, so you're warming up your news feeds to show Facebook that like you're connected with those people, if that makes sense. So I, I love that concept. Uh, I call it engage. And I like to think not in terms of the weird words like algorithm and Facebook. I like to think in terms of relationship uh, because what Facebook is designed, what their algorithm is designed to do is to further relationship and to create as much community and connection as possible. So if you truly create that, meaning you go and, and engage, comment, uh, love on your friends, Facebook looks at that and says, oh, look, they're friends. They're talking to each other. They have a, a connection. Let's let's connect them more. Let's further develop that relationship. So the more human that you are, the more Facebook says, oh, let's 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 give them a little uh, a little more love instead of the kid at the playground who used to be my uh, older daughter, Callie, she'd go to the playground and she'd stand on the edge. She was shy and she'd just stare and watch all the other kids play. We always laughed because it was really cute. She watched all the big kids. She just stare at them. And that's how a lot of you are, are on Facebook. Now, Facebook isn't designed to recognize that shy child and push them into the mix. You got to go be the one that's in the mix. And now Facebook says, oh, look, they're all mixing together. Let's let's mix them together even more. Yep, exactly. So what's what's next? The next one is the your ketone shakeup, right? So we want to be obviously the product of the product. Um, and show people that we're actually using our ketones. Um, we don't need to be always just like every time there's a sale, like posting that. We want to be showing that we do use these ketones daily. And how do we show that? Or how do we show that? By popping on your story and doing a shakeup. Um, every single morning, doesn't matter if it's 6 a.m. or not, I <laughs> or wearing a robe or whatever. I'm not perfect at all. I look silly half the time. And I I kind of just talk about that too. Hey, I didn't sleep very well. I'm up super early. Thank God for ketones and the energy all day to sustain me. Um, so you just take a video of yourself mixing up ketones. And if you don't really want to speak or anything like that, you can just do a time lapse uh on your phone and show that how you're shaking them up. So I'll just do a time lapse and stick my little ketones in there, shake it up, um, and then talk about the benefit that I'm excited about. I'll maybe sometimes write a tip or something like that. But because you need to be showing people often 
things, right? You can't just like do one post and expect people to buy from you. You have to kind of drip on them over and over again. Um, and people that are watching you shake up ketones in that story, not only do you show them that you're product of the product, but the, all those viewers that have seen it, you can reach out to them and say, Hey, thanks so much for viewing my post. Are you interested in what I'm doing? Or are you just being supportive? It opens the conversation. I love it. The, like, think about this as you're imprinting on people's brains that you're the ketone girl or the ketone guy, right? You're, you're, subliminally showing them they may or may not actually stop to watch they'll see you start shaking it up and they might click to the next but what you've just done is create that association and the moment they have external validation the moment they hear somebody or see somebody else it's like oh i just started this drink they're like oh yeah i remember mandy was was talking about that i need to reach out to her and next thing you know they're reaching out hey i, I know that you're, you're, you've been drinking these things can you tell me about it or all of a sudden they they're up a few pounds or hol holidays are over. They're like, man, I need to get on track. You know, I keep seeing Mandy do this. Maybe I'll reach out to her. So the consistency is key here because it's, it's allowing them without you pushing anything or trying to get anything. You're just sharing your life and sharing what you do. And as a result, people start to have that association. It becomes part of you. It becomes part of your brand more or less. So what's the next thing that we do? The next thing is a business post in our stories. So all, all the more reason to come on to Power 30 or do your Power 30, you know, not when it's live, but you have the opportunity then to post a little picture. Like we can all do a little picture right now of like us on a Zoom. We're in business for ourselves, but we're not by ourselves. We get the support and we get to, Nick's taking a picture right now, uh, um, we get to showcase that because some people, how many of you guys, when you started, were just like scared and nervous? Well, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, we have all the tools and the resources in the world to be successful. We just have to use our tools and get into action every day. And, and the way that we can showcase that for other people is by showcasing that we are doing business activities every day at our lead at whatever time of the day works best for us. Um, so we're never alone in that. Um, and definitely just talking, you know, if you don't, if you've done the zoom a million times, you can do other business posts, but the point is we don't talk about the business in the community enough. That was a really big reminder of me this weekend in Epic, um, and being able to talk about that and showcase that once a day in a valuable way shows other people that, Hey, there's an opportunity here as well, without being like, Hey, let's join my business. It showcases what we actually do in the business. It's perfect. And if people start to see that what you're doing is not just selling ketones, that what you're doing is community. It's fun. It's exciting. When you ask the question, Hey, do you want to do what I do? Do you want to share these? Like I do, they'll have a little more context for it. You've already planted the seed. You have to plant these seeds over and over and over again. Most of them don't come to harvest. And the ones that, that do come to harvest have generally been watered over and over and over again by what you're doing consistently. I love it. What's next? Next is growing your community. Um, really, we are in a community-based marketing business. We have to be growing that community all of the time. And um, the way that we can do that is amazingly awesome opportunity to be on Facebook because there's so many opportunities and guys, it doesn't have to just be about like ketos and keto and recipes. Um, I was just sharing on the power 30 that, um, I'm in so many German shepherd groups. Cause I have a crazy German shepherd that I just adopted and I don't know what I'm doing half of the time. And I'm always asking for advice in there, but I have two or three customers who saw my posts about it in quad, because I've met them in a German shepherd group and had nothing to do with keto. So you can go in and grow your network by going to ask questions in a group of something that is aligned with you. If you like to travel, you can go in and ask questions about travel and make connections with those people and communicate with them. Or if you're not asking questions and not struggling with something, you can actually go in. What's your zone of genius? What do you like to do? Are you a person who likes knitting? Are you a person who likes crafts? Like, and you're a ninja at knitting, go and post your knitting projects in those knitting groups and make connections with those people that love knitting. And then eventually they'll see a freebie Friday post. They'll see your stories. Um, and then you're going to be virtual besties with them. And hopefully eventually in real life, maybe they'll want to be a customer or whatever, but that's why we grow our network. So we never have that 
well, I don't know who to talk to. It's like, no, you do know who to talk to. You have a network. Um, and then one thing I do want to kind of just touch on that on, on actually, no, I'll, I'll wait for messaging. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I love that. It's if you're, if your network is always growing, then you're never run out of people to talk to. And it's in your control, especially in Facebook, um, to, to grow it on demand. This is why the consistency aspect of this comes into play, because if you're consistent showing up on these and you're literally growing by three, five, 10 people a day, like just do the math on that consistently over a year. It's insane. Like literally if you added five people a day, that's an extra 1800 people a year uh, that you are now connected to. And if you're doing the other pieces that we're talking about, you're actually building a relationship with them. Like that's the power of social media. That's the power of Facebook that I really locked into and got excited about early on um, because you can in, you can do this in person. Anytime you meet someone in person, you should be adding them to your social media. And that's the fastest way to stay in touch with them and build that relationship long-term. Um, so what's the next piece, Mandy? Um, the next thing is posting. Um, and that really does go in hand in hand with growing your your network as well. Um, because we're not just going to be constantly posting, like we're all provers and we're so proud to be provers and we all want to share the power of ketones with everyone. But sometimes if we're just a billboard for ketones, like that turns people off. Right. And we want to showcase our knitting skills. I don't know why knitting's happening today, but it just came through. Um, but we want to be showing our knitting skills. We want to be showing how we're moms. We want to be showing our dads and we want to be showing our food and our habits and all of those things. Like I just rattled off four things that you guys can be posting about, maybe not knitting, but go get in your zone of genius and be authentic. Thank you, Carrie, for that comment. Um, and be you literally on your page by posting and giving value and showcasing your life and intertwine how do you utilize ketones or how has this um, community impacted you um, and sprinkle that in, not just constantly like, oh, there's a 25% off sale. Let's just like, no, we're wanting to showcase how we utilize ketones every single day and inspire other people, educate other people, entertain other people and engage other people um, and then go talk to those people. So that's kind of five and six, Nick. Um, we're going to be posting about our amazing products and who we are as people. And then we want to be messaging them. But we don't have to be like, hey, what do you know about ketones and ketosis right away? If you've posted about a German shepherd, you can talk about, hey, thanks so much for liking my post about my dog. How are you? And then just talk to them. Like, I think we overcomplicate like and get so scared on social, but like, how would you want to be talked to in person? Like, you're not going to just be like, Hey, you want to buy my ketones? Like in person, <laughs> we want to just have an authentic conversation and if you're nervous or aren't sure, follow some scripts that we have to open the conversation. But Nick, every time he does this training conversations over time, it blows my mind because I'm like, oh, that's so true. Like open the conversation and somehow because you've been showcasing how you utilize ketones every day and you're not just a Pamela Spamela posting about ketones all day, you're showcasing like, hey, this is how... I utilize ketones. Like, thank God for ketones today. My dog kept me up all day. Like then somebody would be like, LOL, same thing. Or the conversation just starts. It's we're getting into conversations about whatever eventually ketones will come up, but we can't do all of these other activities and not have the conversation piece. I know some of us are in here and I've been guilty of it too. In the beginning, I was doing all the things, but I wasn't engaging back. I wasn't actually having the ketone conversation or I wasn't even having conversations at all. I was just going Facebook live and I'm like, oh, well, if I want to actually get ketones in people's mouths, I have to kind of talk to them about it, but I'm not going to go be a Pamela Spamela and be like, Hey, there's 25% off ketones. Do you want to buy my ketones? No. Hey, thanks so much for commenting on my post. I appreciate you. How are you doing? And then they're probably going to complain about how they're tired and mom life and whatever. And then you'd be like, Hey, have you ever seen my posts about ketones? It will eventually come up if you're in the conversation. Awesome. So you recommend like just initiating conversation with people consistently. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Yes. And don't, and sometimes I get a little butthurt. Even I have to re-remind myself, like if no one comments 
or whatever, there's still likes and loves. And remember too, that sometimes the feed doesn't show your post for like a couple days. So sometimes I'll have a post that like my grandmother will like, and I'll be like, well, obviously I'm not going to talk to her about them. Um, and I'm not going to like get a conversation with her, but like, so, but then like four days later, the post will like pop off or start to get likes and love. So you just have to divorce the, I hope this post is going to be great and just post whatever's on your heart and consistently do that. But remember that everybody that likes, loves, and comments are all people that are an opportunity for you to get into a conversation, but use your smartness and discern where they are in the prover journey. Like my grandmother, obviously not going to get in conversation with her, but like, if it's somebody that I've seen their little Facebook bubble a a bunch of times, I'd be like, Hey, how are you? Like, thanks so much for always commenting and liking and loving my posts. Like, is there anything I can do to support you on your health journey? I'm that's my positioning, but like, Hey, thanks so much for liking and loving all my posts. Like I see your bubble all the time. How are you? Perfect. A how are you is very powerful, believe it or not. <laughs> and it's it's one of those things where there's days where you might want to be direct. How are you? Are you uh, are you just giving me love and support? Or are you interested in learning more about what I do? That's a pretty direct question. Mm-hmm. There's other days where you're just going to say, hey, how are you? And there's no right or wrong. What there is, is have a lot of conversations because the more conversations that you have, the more opportunity you have to talk about ketones and the more it will start to come up. And one thing I will say, I do ask, like, how long have you been following me? And how long, like when they finally are like, okay, I'm finally ready. I ask them, Hey, how long have you been following me before you've, you decided that you wanted to ask me about ketones? And most people say like months or even years. I'm not even kidding. One of my promoters that just started a couple months ago, she's been following me for six years, six years. And then finally decided to try ketones and then sign up. So how Nick said earlier, it's like you are planting seeds. They're not going to bloom for probably 90 days for at least. That's awesome. And that's very true. Very true. How long were you following me before you enrolled? Do you remember? Not very long at all. Not very long at all. Hey, every now and then you, you, <laughs> the blind squirrel gets a nut. Well, that's good. But like a couple of weeks, a month. I probably saw like the ketone post was probably the third post I saw. Hey, there you go. Every now and then, keto lasagna, (laughs) keto lasagna got her. Um, Sometimes it works like that. And sometimes it doesn't. That's the hard part, right? The hard part is disciplining the fact that not everybody enrolls on the first message. I am one of the people that my friend called me and I signed up 30 minutes later, right? But I also just enrolled a customer who'd been following me for six years. So somewhere between two or three posts, and six years is the magic number. You tell me. I'm not sure which one it is, but somewhere in between there, you're going to find magic. You just have to continue long enough to go find the people that stay in six years. Three months for uh, Rat Lady. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, all right. What's next on that list, Mandy? The last one is commenting, which all coincides with pretty much everything we've been saying. It's like you don't... Um, you know, you don't want to leave people hanging. You want to acknowledge them regardless of whatever the post is. If people are commenting, just say, leave them a little heart, leave them a little something back just to engage to again, um, show the platform like, Hey, hi buddy. Uh, show the platform that that person should be shown your post and you guys are actually virtual besties. So the more virtual besties you create through commenting, messaging, and posting, um, the more conversations that you're having, um, and just giving people acknowledgement and just again, showing like the little, the platform, like, Hey, this person is valuable to that. And I will take full ownership that I kind of stopped doing the commenting stuff. Cause it got a little bit overwhelming, but now it's like, I'm disciplined enough because I see the very big difference, um, as well. And then one thing, as much as we all love our prove it community, if you're just seeing and engaging on other prove it people's posts, we have to kind of not do that as much and go f- grow our network in like aligned groups for new people um, as well. So there's nothing wrong with going to comment, but I'm saying if you're just seeing all prove it people's posts, like that's not serving you or your business. We want to be going and engaging on brand new people or people that are already on our friends list. Um, and then one thing that's like a ninja tip that I've started the last couple months, 
um, how many of you guys all feel like, oh, well, I don't know who to talk to. You guys go look at your friends list. How many people are on your friends list? If you have two, even if you have five people on your friends list, are those five people drinking ketones? Have you asked them about ketones? Like I have 2000 people on my friends list that are not drinking ketones. I maybe have a hundred of them. So I have work to do just simply by looking at my friends list. And I'm not saying to go message every single person on your friends list, but start at the A's and go down. That's part of my DMO every day. I go through my list and I message at least 20 people, but guys, I do this full time. So it doesn't matter. Don't compare my seven years and my DMOs to like what, where, where you are at and capable of doing. But even if you message one person a day, starting even maybe with birthdays, getting in conversations with those people, and you can clear them out if they're like, you know, negative Nancy's, you don't want them anymore. You know, if you're not going to message them, start asking yourself why you won't message them for one and two, um, clear them out to make more space for new people that you can go and be actual virtually virtual besties with. Um, and then it just really just gives you a driving point because I have been guilty of that too. I don't know who to talk to. Maybe I should do this a lot. And it's like, no, if I have 2000 people on my friends list, that's 2000 conversations or an opportunity to clear them out or get in conversations. So that's just one thing I really drill home because we all get into like, freak out mode. Sometimes we don't know who to talk to, but like you have that whole list. They're obviously friends and connected with you for a reason. Um, so go and make friends with them and get in conversations with them. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So at the end of the day, all of this follows the basic social media strategy, which is post grow and engage. Mm -hmm. And it's just designed to take you through different activities and exercises that will help to support that. And again, I'll reiterate this over and over and over again, the, the magic truly comes when you combine meeting people in person with the online aspect, because those two, like you can fuel and develop a stronger connection and have more energy from the people that you meet in person. And then you have this long-term aspect with the social media and you have the ability to meet people that are outside of your community. But if you combine the two, Local community can grow the fastest. Online community can grow the farthest. And that's such a powerful combination. Um, I, I want to close with a couple just uh, questions to you all. Um, and I want you to kind of self-assess. Uh, so I want you to think just kind of to yourself and you can answer in the chat. Um, when it comes to posting on a scale of one to five, well, five being you're just, you've mastered posting. You're super consistent. You're every day, you have at least two to three posts going up. Your stories are loaded with, uh, you know, five or more tiles. Um, you're posting about all the different aspects of your life and you're truly like building this. People are excited to see what you're doing. That's a five one. It's like posting. I haven't posted for ages. I just go there and go like this and follow everyone else. I want you to know where you guys are at. You have one, you have two, you have three, you have four, you have five. And then as you're thinking about that, what's one thing that you can do uh, to take yourself from maybe a three to a four or a four to a five or a two to a three, wherever you're at? Like, what is what is that thing that you're going to focus on this week? Uh, maybe it's adding more to your stories. Maybe it's going live every day. I just want you to have one thing, something that you're going to commit to because it's not about going from zero to hero. It's about just making small additional tweaks that will make all the difference consistently over time. I love it. Uh, consistency, Aaron, do more shakeups, post daily life. Um, going live more, Stacy. Awesome. All right. So... That's the first one, post grow. Scale of one to five, how consistently are you at, you know, either engaging in new groups, adding new friends every single day? Five meaning you have like, you've been consistent for the last couple of, maybe this last six months. You've been adding five or more friends every single day. You're crushing it. One meaning, what's that? I don't grow my network. I just kind of post and hope everything works out. Um, where are you at? Be honest. Awesome. And this is really just to give you an awareness of areas that you can improve. And if you start plugging into these power thirties, or at least the replays more consistently, 
you will start to do that. Um, who else is hiding from this one? I love it. <laughs> All right, this this part's the easiest. I mean, on Facebook, the reason I love Facebook, I love Instagram too. Uh, don't get me wrong, but I love Facebook because you're in control. You're in the driver's seat. Like you get to control the number of people that you're connected with just by asking. It's so, so simple. All right, next one, engaging uh, on a scale of one to five. Uh, five meaning every single comment that's come into your page in the last couple of months you've replied to. Uh, it means that you've been engaging in Messenger. You've been commenting on uh, everybody's posts. You've been sending birthday messages. You were like an engagement ninja. You have this community built. That's a five. One, you're like, I, I'm the, the six-year-old that goes to the park and just stares at all the other kids. I'd never say anything. Um, Which are you? Where are you at? Four, four, five. All right. Oh, I see a lot of fours. That's good. That's really good. What's something that you can do to, to go from a four to a five? If you type four or a three to a four, a one number jump at a time is awesome. Maybe you can go from a two to a four, but it's not necessary. Just start building the muscle, building the habits where it's at. All right. So if you're a four, what's something that you can do more of or more consistently? Type that in the chat. Like what's something that you'll commit to leaving this soon? Make sure you're responding to every comment. There you go, Tabitha. I would, I always try like asking questions and comments. True story, if I do a post on the Keto Dad page, I do not necessarily comment on everything because I just don't have the bandwidth to do so. When you get to that point, that's like, you kind of have to smile a little bit. You have to have some gratitude around that. However, if there is a post that I want to be seen by a lot more people, and if I'm really focusing on building relationship and I like I want to drive something, if I just comment back to all the posts, Facebook thinks the post is alive and they just show it to another subset of people. They keep showing it, they keep showing it, they keep showing it. If I don't do that, the post fizzles out and it just goes to my next newest one. But if I go to back to a, a post that was a day or two or three ago and I start replying to all the comments, Next thing you know, that post takes on a life of its own. So there's a lot that goes on in that. You're showing Facebook that you're that people are in, engaged in that and they're excited to see it. So you have to up that game a little bit or if you have an opportunity to, like if that's an area of improvement, that is something that can profoundly increase what is seen when you post. So uh, any final words, Mandy, for all of us listening in. Um, yeah, just get into the practice and do it. And if you really, really want to explode, uh, go Facebook live. And if anybody wants to see my very first Facebook live, I share this with my team. It is so embarrassing. You have to start somewhere and it really honestly just get into the practice of it really is that simple. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for being on everybody. Mandy, appreciate you taking time to, uh, share with us today. This is really powerful. And guys, this like the beauty of this is it's simple. It's simple and it's easy to do. The challenge of it, if it's easy to do, it's easy not to do, right? If it's easy to do, it's easy not to do. So the question is, will we do it or will we not do it? That's up to you to decide. And that really is the biggest challenge in this business. So we hopefully are making it easy for all of us by having these Zooms each day. Uh, remember the rest of this month, Wednesday is going to be focused on the Power 30. We have those every single day, except for Christmas through December 31st. My challenge to you is how many of those will you be on live? And the ones that you're not on live, will you commit to watch the replay? So thanks for being on, guys. Thank you, Mandy. We'll Bye. talk to you later. Bye-bye.